Hey everybody, welcome back to another Python tutorial. Still looking at Pygame, doing some cool programming and code stuff. And uh, in the last video, we actually added a, a white color to the window, so now it's the, the screen is white rather than black. And that works very nice for us, it's very, very simple and easy. But, I don't know if you've noticed, maybe on your computer, I know it's certainly been doing it on my computer, it's just starting to now, um, my processor kind of freaks out. <laughs> like I can hear my fan rapidly spinning because it's trying to keep up with this with this Pi game game that's running, but it's not even doing anything. So why is it taking up so much resources and stuff? Why is it making my computer cry? Well, games. Uh, I don't know. I, I I'm trying to think of like maybe an example on like old DOS or something, but old games or at least old kind of processes that would make these images appear on your screen and that would make make for tons of entertainment, they would run super duper fast. Not at the time, because they had much slower computers at that point, but they would run at the speed of your computer. And if you had a computer that was faster than others, maybe it would run at that speed compared to the speed that it would run at your friend's computer, or that sort of thing. And at least now, when we try to run old DOS games, they will run at super fast lightning speed. And we need to be able to account for that and kind of slow it down. We need to make it run at a certain amount of frames per second. And that's exactly what we're going to get into now in, a, in this tutorial. Um, what we need to be looking at is something called a clock. So I'm going to set a clock variable, and what that's going to equal is something from the time kind of sub-module of, of Python. And you can look at this in the documentation. I'll, I will get that set up for you over here. Um, time. It's kind of a small sub-portion, but clock, right over here, you see it creates an object to help keep track of time. We check it out, and it's got some functions like tick to update the clock, or um, get the FPS to compute the clock frame rate. And those are nifty functions that we'll be able to look at later, but for now, we're only kind of interested in, in wanting to associate with tick. This updates the clock. This method should be called once per frame. It's kind of something that we should do. It's a good kind of standard and a good way to optimize the program. It will compute how many milliseconds have passed since the previous call. We're essentially applying a frame rate, or frames per second, to the program. If you pass the optional frame rate argument, the function will delay to keep the game running slower than the given ticks per second. This can, help, this can be used to help limit the runtime of a game, which is exactly what we were talking about. Note that this function uses SDL delay. Um, SDL is a kind of the module and the library that Pi, that Pygame is built off of and, and, and based off of. Um, you can use that with C and C++ and lots of other cool programming languages. But it's, it's noting anyway, the SDL delay function is not accurate on every platform, but it does not use so much, I'm sorry, too much CPU usage. So, use tick busy loop if you want an accurate timer and don't mind chewing up the CPU usage. Well, tick will work just fine for all purposes, so We've got the clock already initialized. Now let's create just a variable for the frames per second that we want to want to set and keep track of. I'm gonna just say mine can be 60, and right down here in the display where we're actually constantly running and we're updating the screen, let's set up that clock tick. Clock right over here, right above the display. We're gonna go ahead and tick with that certain amount of frames per second. Now when we run the program, hopefully no errors. Great, we got our white window. Um, nothing happens still, but things have slowed down substantially. And that's good. We wanted to be able to keep it kind of easy, keep it at peace, and keep track of what we're doing with a limited, capped frames per second. Cool. That's the only thing I wanted to introduce to you guys in this video. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Going to be getting into some more cool stuff very, very soon, but we do have to knock out the basics. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.